Oregon Health Sciences University provides free drive-up testing for anyone who wants it without an appointment or a referral from a doctor. They set up tents at the Expo Center in Portland and the Hillsborough Stadium and offer the testing Monday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. With the surge of COVID-19 cases in Oregon, they are now very busy places. Just ask Kelly Primrose. Um, she's had a fever for a couple days. She took her 23-year-old daughter to the testing site in Hillsborough on Monday. Kelly snapped pictures of the ordeal because it seemed like it took forever. As time passed, um, it became pretty evident that we were moving less than a snail's pace. So what was the your, your total time? How long did it take? Four hours and 20 minutes. That is incredible. <laughs> Imagine nearly four and a half hours with your daughter who has a fever waiting for the test. And I did mention it to the swabbing guy. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, tell our bosses. Maybe they'll see this. A spokeswoman for OHSU sent us a statement that read in part, there is a huge surge of people wanting tests and... Unfortunately, the increased demand has resulted in longer than usual wait times, frequently up to two hours and beyond. The OHSU site is part of an effort that now gives Oregon a testing capacity of around 41,000 people a week, the most since the outbreak began, but still not where many think the state should be. Monday, state health leaders said about 35,000 people a week are actually getting the test. The number does sound big until you see reports like this from the New York Times which shows Oregon as one of the 34 states far below the target level of testing set by the Harvard Global Health Institute. It shows Oregon testing at less than half the number it should be at. The Oregon Health Authority has a different goal, testing 2% of the state population each month, and OHSU said it hit that goal in early June. In Multnomah County, leaders have noticed a change. What we're seeing is there's been a real increase in demand for testing. Uh, I think that's both probably for people with symptoms, but it's also for a whole lot of people who are concerned, but don't necessarily have symptoms right now. They're asking people without symptoms to avoid getting tested. As the number of cases in Oregon and nationwide surges, there is a sudden shortage of chemicals needed for the tests, which means the national labs are slow to report some results. And for all who have family flying in for vacation and thought they could get a quick test to make sure no one's a carrier, beware. The results could take a week or more. So you can imagine that if we don't get that test result for seven, eight, nine, ten days, we may be getting the test result when they're actually sort of almost done with the quarantine period and the infection has already spread two to three more times since then. Now, Pat's joining us to chat about this a little bit. And Pat, um, let's talk specifically about the wait times because you checked with some national and local labs. What else do they have to say? Well, the good news is that the local labs can get them to you relatively quickly. Legacy is two to three days. OHSU is one to two days. So that's good and that's helpful. But Quest, which is that one of those big national labs, says they're basically maxed out. And if you're a priority one person, yeah, they can probably get it back to your doctor in a day. But for most people, it's going to be seven days more, which almost for public health reasons makes the test useless. I mean, it's good for you to know, but it's not good for doing community sure. tracing and that kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely. And I think this is one of the things that's confusing to people. There are actually several different types of tests. Can you explain to us some of the differences? You bet. Well, there's two main types. One is checking to see if you have the infection currently. The other is checking for antibodies that your body created to fight off the infection. So it can tell doctors and scientists that you had your, the uh, infection earlier. Okay, so the antibody is done with a blood prick. That's usually a uh, bit of blood that is taken out of your finger. Uh, the other type is called viral. That's done with a nasal swab. Those are all the pictures you've seen of people getting them at the drive uh, places. The of uh, of the virals, then there are two types. One's called an antigen test. It's faster and less expensive, but it's also a little bit less accurate. The other is called the molecular test. It is more accurate, but it takes longer for those results. Ashley? Yeah, there is definitely a lot to know and a lot to keep track of. So Pat, we appreciate all the reporting you've done. Thank you.